Uh, hope you're well. It's Sunday evening. It's uh, 8 p.m. Uh, tonight we're talking. About, uh, we're doing a live webinar. We're doing it across all, all, all platforms. So I think we're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook, and we're live on the webinar. Uh, tonight we've got a hell of a lot of people logged in, and the name of tonight's webinar is how a young graduate tells how he became a millionaire in just one year and explains how you can do the same. Now, tonight's webinar, admittedly, it's a bit of a different journey as to what it would normally be because I'm going to tell you a bit about my journey. When I say a bit about my journey, how I became financially free because property's never always been an easy journey for me. First thing I want you to do is, uh, whether you're watching online or whether you're uh, watching by the webinar, if you can say a quick hello, just let me know that you're, um, you can hear me nice and loudly and clearly, and we'll start to rest further. So if you're online as well, if you can say a quick hi, that would be fantastic. Okay, so brilliant. Everyone can say that they can hear me nice and loudly. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, if you've got questions and you are on the webinar, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, jot them down. We will be monitoring them, and we'll be going from there, and I'll, I'll try and answer as many of the questions as possible and hopefully that kind of you know we'll, we'll get through as many questions as we can okay fantastic okay right so first of all I want to say thank you thank you so much for your time this evening it's a sunny Sunday evening hopefully you've enjoyed the weekend hopefully you've spent it with your loved ones hopefully you've uh, taken the time to relax and re-energize for uh, a following and a productive week ahead because time is the most precious commodity and I guarantee that the next 90 minutes is going to be the best investment that you're going to make. So in 90 minutes time, what are we going to be talking about? Now we're going to be online for 90 minutes, which is a long time to be online. I appreciate we've got best part, uh, a lot of slides to get through. There's a lot of content to get through. Uh, first thing we're going to be talking about is the shortcut secret to find and sell deals from the comfort of your own home. Just like I'm doing now, so I'm at my own, I'm at my home office, uh, and I work from here probably two days a week. Uh, I've got an office office, should we call it, uh, and it works extremely well. If I decide I don't want to go into the office, I can work from here and I can work, remote, work remotely. I would like to think that I've got the thing called the is it the laptop lifestyle, where I can pretty much trade from anywhere in the world just by using, provided I've got internet access, I've got my laptop, I can work from pretty much anywhere remotely. We'll also be sharing with you this evening the simple three-step de three deal trading system which uh, allows you to make £5,000 a month cash flow whilst working part-time. And we'll be looking at the five different types of deals that you can trade because people only assume you can trade one style of deal but what happens to the rest of the deals you're you're actually missing a massive pool of opportunity and finally and this is a big key we'll be talking about exactly what to say to estate agents so they bring you deals before they go online or even in their window so hopefully you think that's um a benefit to you so why should you listen to me? So who is Arshilahi? What am I all about? Probably hear or you see about me in social media, probably read about me in magazines, but who am I? Uh, am I actually the real deal? Now, uh, first of all, I'm uh, an author of an Amazon bestseller book called Boom Bust and Back Again. And as the title suggests, it's never always been an easy journey for me in property. And anyone that says to you that property, they got involved in property and it's gone fantastically well from them from day one, I would be very skeptical about it. Because from time to time, you're going to have issues. From time to time, you're going to come across stuff that's going to create a bit of a setback. And likewise, I, I probably experience a setback every couple of years. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that because what you tend to do is you learn from it. Now, for those that have been watching my social media over the weekend, I get back into fitness and I started getting back into running. And I experienced a bit of a setback on the weekend. Reason being is that I'm not as good as I used to be. Mentally, I had a bit of a challenge. When I was running and I saw people overtaking me that were probably older than me and younger than me and they were fitter than me, I thought, well, you know what? I was better than this. So you get setbacks in all walks of life. It depends on how you deal with them, which will take you to the next level. So like I said, I'm an author of a book called Boom Bust and Back Again. I've been involved in property now 
17 years. So I started when in the year 2000. I'm going to show a bit of my uh, journey with you on that. And uh, I'm going to share how I started in deal trading, um, how I started deal trading business on student side savings. And then I went off to make a massive, a whopping £6 million in three years. Now, um, seems like a massive claim, but when the boom was good, it was really good. And then more importantly, when it went bad, it went really bad. And we're back again. And finally, I'm a property investor myself. Uh, I'm always buying, so I practice what I preach. I'm a trainer, I'm a mentor, and I've helped hundreds, if not thousands of people, help to achieve financial freedom. Now, just for being on the webinar tonight, and that's for those that are actually on the webinar. Now, if you're watching on any of the social media forums, like Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, uh, you'll see the link underneath the, web, uh, underneath the live feed. You need to click that link if you want the bonus for tonight. We're giving away a document, which is what I call the ultimate vendor questions, which is giving you the tools to elegantly find the landlord or homeowners reason for wanting to sell quickly. Because that's the most important thing. We need to understand why are they selling? How are they selling? What's the reason for it? We need to find a problem. We need to find a solution. And as a result, we tend to make some money from it. But that will be given at the end of the webinar. So you need to make sure that you're on the webinar in order to receive the link for that. So we talk about a secret from a young graduate, which is me. So we're going to go down a bit of a personal journey tonight. So 14 years ago, sorry, it's more than 14 years ago. Uh, yeah, I think it was 14 years ago. Graduated from the University of Gloucestershire with a degree in international business management. Had a great time at university, met some fantastic people, and a lot of the people that were on my webinar, uh, on my social media, are people that I met at university. And you know, I'm forever grateful for meeting them because they form part of the person that I am today. So rather than use my knowledge in, uh, in a multinational company, I decided to start my own business and live life on my own terms. So as a young graduate with little savings and no uh, job, what business did I decide to go into? Now, story here was, uh, admittedly, uh, my father had a small portfolio and his portfolio was ticking along quite nicely. Uh, when I say ticking along, uh, he had some property. It was never his first passion. Engineering was his first passion. And so when he, when I left university, as all Asian parents do, they said, so what, what, what are you gonna do? You know, you've been degree educated. Where are you gonna go from here? And I said, you know what, Dad, to be fair, I've got a bit of an ear for music. Um, got a, mu a lot of uh, musical friends on my Facebook feel, um, feed as well. Uh, they're probably seeing me a DJ all around the UK. Um, I said, well, to be fair, I can't kind of like music. And I said, so your passion is property. I said, all right, okay, that's that. That's that then. That, that's kind of question. Uh, that's clear. That up. Thanks for the career advice, Dad. Thank you. Um, but so we moved on. Uh, and so I decided to look after his portfolio, but that wasn't making you know any great shape or form of any money. It wasn't. It wasn't enough to supply me with an income. It wasn't enough to survive another outgoing. So I had to think on my feet. So if I'm going to do that, I'm I'm going to pretty much be like a free property manager for my father. How am I going to excel in property? And so we decided that the one thing that I needed to do is that I needed to start out on myself. And I need to start out on my own because that was already looking after itself. I couldn't really add any more value to that. Um, so I said to my friends, I said that I wanted to get started in property, uh, in business. And to be fair, they all laughed. Because what's the one thing that you think of when you think about property? You automatically assume that you need a deposit and proof of income to invest in property as a graduate. And let's face it, I had neither. I didn't care what they thought, so I went off ahead with my plan. The plan was to build a HMO portfolio with JV Finance. Now, for those that don't know, JV uh, is a, uh, means a joint venture, so I want you to stay with me on this journey because this is a really important part of the webinar. To understand where I've come from to where I am now is a massive journey. So I tried and I failed for months. To earn success, you've got to feel failure. Without a doubt, you have to feel failure. 
and for months and months, have you ever been there on that journey where you seem to keep banging your head against that brick wall? Just say, give me a quick yes or no, just to let me know that you're still alive, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on the webinar, just say, have you ever come to a point where you think, you know, I'm, I'm consistently going through the same pattern, knocking on the same doors and hearing the same answer. Sorry, Arsh, I can't help you. I don't think it's right for us right now. Maybe we can speak again in the future. I had no proven record. And this is the reason why I failed. I had no proven record. And I was 21 years old. Who's going to give me an opportunity like that at 21 years old? Who would invest their hard-earned money in a 21-year-old? Now, the good thing with me is that when someone says no, I just mean, uh, for me, it just means that I've got to try a little bit harder to convince them. Now, in all my journey, and for those that haven't read my book, whenever someone says no, that just means that I've got to try even harder to turn that into yes. I'm a pretty determined individual when I want to be, and we really go, and we really do. And, and when you look at the, some of the stuff that I've achieved over 16 years, I would like to think that some people will never achieve that in 60 years. So keep moving forward. So starting at failure. After three months of rejection, it is obvious that my plans was not going to work. I started to actually start to think that again, maybe my friends were right, and so that I should probably start to look like uh, look for a corporate job that they had. But then I kept thinking about the humiliation of actually them saying, you know what, we told you so. And that forced me to find a new way to invest in property. When you're forced into a corner, you sometimes come up with moments of genius. And this is what I feel that I found and I discovered out of desperation or out of a desperate necessity, and it completely changed my life. So that's where I've come from. That's a little bit about who I am. Uh, and a lot of people on the webinar say, oh, yes, yes, I can completely relate to that. Um, so, going back to the early noughties, when I say the early noughties, talking 2000 plus, I discovered a way to invest in property without buying a house. The simple system made me in excess of six million pounds in just three years. We traded millions and millions of pounds of property within three years. So what did I do? Here it is, guys. I find and I trade property deals, and here's how it works. Now, by the time at the end of this webinar, you're going to say, "Oh, to be fair, excuse me." You're going to say, "And this is how raw it is." You're going to say, "Well, is it really as simple as that?" And the answer is yes. And the reason why I say that is because we're going to have live testimonials on the call tonight. We're going to have people who said, Arsh, okay, all I've done is I've followed the system and it's worked for them. So first of all, what is trading deals? Now, just uh, for the people on the webinar, for the people on Facebook, the people on YouTube, can you just comment, do you know what I actually mean when I'm talking about trading deals? What do you think trading deals is? Because there's lots of terminology that's been banded about on uh, banded about on Facebook, you know, banded about on social media. Okay, so a couple of people, if you can, when I talk to you about trading deals, what are we actually talking about? So guys, if you're on Facebook, if you wouldn't mind, can you just let me know quick, yes, uh, or what your terminology of trading deals is? Okay, so Tony straight away online, he's go uh, sourcing deals to buyers. Uh, Julia has said assisted sale, possibly not quite there yet. Okay, packaging now, Lee on Facebook. Okay, so most commonly goes, Arsh, unfortunately I have no idea. And there's no problem with that. No, there's no such thing as a stupid question. There's no such thing as a bad question. So if you never know, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting your hand up and saying, Arsh, you know what, to be fair, I need a little bit of assistance. And that's the best way because if you don't ask a question, you will never know. So this first, when I talk about trading deals, it is literally a case of pretty much, let's, I'm trying to think the best way of describing it. We're almost like a glorified estate agent. 
We need to find people who are selling their properties and we need to find some people to buy their properties and we act as a center. So there's A, B and C. A is the owner, B is you in the center. You're the connector. You're the person that's gonna make this happen and C is the buyer. So we need to put A and C together and B needs to sit in the center put them together and make some money. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, brilliant. Just going through some of the questions. Just going through some of the questions. Okay, so set, you know, that's a good, to be fair, that's a good uh, interpretation of what's required. So, so uh, Sudip, who's online, he says, uh, trend deals is selling an opportunity that someone's willing to buy. Yes, right. Did you know that there are actually five types of deals that you can trade? And I'm going to be talking to you about the five different types of deals in a minute. The basic principle of deal trading is solving problems that are profit. You are helping the owner, whether that be the homeowner, well, because you've got to remember that when people are selling a property, we automatically assume it's this old couple who are looking to sell so that they can retire. We never always we never consider all the other different types of, types of scenarios that you can come across. There are lots. In, let's just use an example. It could be an investor that's looking to sell an investment that's not going as great as they imagined. There's people who are naturally upgrading. There are people who are downgrading. There are people who are moving on further with their life. There are people who are emigrating. What do we do? These are all people that need help. Now. Does a market exist for it? Of course it does, because when you look at it, one of the, well, well two of the largest port, property portals in the UK today, or worldwide, right, me and Supla, they've both got uh, properties for sale on there, which means that all these people need our assistance. We're helping the homeowner or the investor to move quickly. We are helping the investor to great, get, get a great deal without the time and effort of finding it. And as a result of us being in the interaction or the intermediary, we can charge a service, a fee for our service. Does it kind of make sense? Does anyone, okay, so, uh, right, okay. So Jake says, yeah, but I don't see how it could be so lucrative. Jake, with stay with me, my friend, because we are gonna go through to this. So, we're going to go back to the reason why, and then we're going to get straight into the meat because we've got a lot to cover. So, reason why? Who has a strong enough reason why that they can almost? Uh, who has a strong enough why can bear almost any hat? Does that kind of make sense? My motivation in 2003, my reason why was to prove my friends wrong. My motivation today is financial freedom for my family. I've structured all of my debt to reach zero on the, on the eve of my 45th birthday. That's my reason why. I made, I've, I made that decision after losing four million pounds in property in 2008. Now, some of you may be listening to that and say, well, Arsh, okay, if you lost, you made so much money and then you lost so much money, why are you still involved in property? Fact is, I'm a determined individual. Just because something beats me down doesn't mean that I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna get back up and we're gonna make it work even harder. If you want to transform the quality of your life, you need to know why you're doing it. So what's your why? Now guys on Facebook, we're gonna log off shortly. The reason why I say we're gonna log off, because we're then gonna concentrate solely on the webinar. So if you have enjoyed it so far, there's a link underneath that you need to press to join the webinar. So this, is to, uh, this is a time, this is the opportunity where we're gonna start moving forward, talking about our reasons why, talking about what deal trading is and how it can be so lucrative and how you can look at every property and try and monetize that lead. Hopefully you've enjoyed the webinar, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the uh, live feed and I'll be speaking to you all very soon. All you gotta do is click the link below. Speak to you all very soon, bye bye. So sorry about that guys, so we're gonna move straight on. So can you tell me what your reason why is? What is it that you're doing? Okay, so straight away Paul has come in. 
I want choices. Now, choices is a great one. Do you know, because uh, property allows you to have choices. Property allows you to have choice. Cash flow allows you to have choices. Financial freedom. So a lot of people come in with questions about financial freedom. A lot of people come in about my family. Okay, so I understand that. So when we talk about deal trading, we're talking about solving problems at a profit. You can trade deals anywhere by simple uh, by following a simple three-step process, which I'm going to give you in a minute. If you think of what you do as a sol uh, as solving problems rather than trading deals, you'll open a new world of possibilities. Does that kind of make sense? What we have to do, we have to open our minds to the opportunities. Um, I'm just going through here. So, okay, so someone's put, I want to create a legacy as well as financial freedom. You know what? Uh, creating a legacy is fantastic. Vicky says, I want to, uh, my why is to prove that I can do it. Just like I did it, you know, I had people doubting me. I still have people doubting me, even though I've got this huge rage of success. People still doubt me. They still think that I'm a one-trick pony. Even after 17 years, they still think it's going to fail. But guess what, guys? By following the three-step process, you'll, you'll find that it's very hard to fail because there's very little risk attached to deal trading. So three-step system. First one, find. In essence, you need to find a homeowner that wants to sell their house quickly. It could have been that they've been let down by an estate agent or they don't want to sell through an estate agent. It could have been that their house sell has fallen through and that they may potentially lose their dream home if they can't find a buyer for their house. This is why you must first understand the vendor situation. What is the problem that they have? Remember, a problem clearly defined is a problem half solved. Does that make sense? If you do not understand the situation, it's very hard for you to find the solution. And I say this day in, day out. I always talk, every day I mention two words, pain, motivation, pain, motivation motivation pain motivation what is their pain what is their motivation how can we create a, uh, a solution to their problem so we're not actually property traders we're the problem solvers we have to clearly define what the problem is you have to help uncover the pro owners problems and by doing this I'm going to be giving you the ultimate vendors questions to use this to find the owner's problems. Ask each question in a conserva uh, conversational way so it doesn't look like an inter interview. Now, so lots of people that I know that go on deal trading workshops, to do, they come out like almost like a robot, it's like a script. Yes, sir, so what is your name? What, where do you live? How much is your property on the market for? How much would you accept for it? Wrong, 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 wrong. Because people deal business, uh, do business with people. As a result of them doing business with you, you're going to relate to them. You're going to build rapport with them. As a rebuild, part of building rapport, we're going to, um, we're going to identify what their pain is. It's going to pour out in the conversation. We're not even going to ask for it, believe it or not. We're not even going to ask what the problem is. They're going to tell us about that. And the reason why I say that, now uh, I'm going to talk to you about shortly about a thing called the Property Elite Property Tribe. And we did a webinar with the Elite Property Tribe members um, last Wednesday. And what was really, really funny is that one of the guys that's on the Elite Property Tribe, a chap called Polly, based in London, I made him do a live call without giving him any kind of notice, without giving him any kind of preparation. I, I like to see people on a single, uh, single swim. I said to him, okay, here's a phone number for a guy called Matthew. Here's a property that he's got. Call him, see what we can do, and see if we can monetize the call. Uh, and he goes, are you sure about this? I'm going, yes. And Pauline's a very, you know, he's very placid in... Uh, placid individual, he's a, he's a lovely gentleman, and I said, he goes, I'll show him up for the challenge, he said, great, get on the phone. Okay, so I said to him, remember, 
don't mention any figures, don't do anything, keep him talking. I said, you're gonna be on the call for a minimum 10 minutes. He goes, oh, 10 minutes is a long time. 10 minutes turned into 20 minutes, 20 minutes turned into 30 minutes. We were on that call for 46 minutes. And within 46 minutes, we knew everything to do about this individual. 46 minutes, we've got a viewing booked with that vendor for tomorrow morning. Now, Pauline is in London. The property is actually in Bridge End. So it's quite a distance, you know, for those that know, know where Bridge End is, Bridge End is towards Cardiff. Uh, and sorry, I'm just going to say, are you, are you keep writing messages and you keep, well, you don't write messages, you keep just writing letters, which is kind of uh, blocking up the feed. So if you can, please stop. Um, so we're going to meet Matthew tomorrow. And the one thing that came out evidently in the uh, conversation was he's got 50 properties. He's been a landlord for 27 years and he's a tired landlord. He does all the work himself. He meets all the tenants himself. He uh, he interviews all the tenants. He does all the maintenance. He you know he does everything, and so he's very tired and he wants to sell that. He wants to sell and he also wants to do some rent to rent. So that all came off one phone call. He told us he's paying. He goes on, oh, you know what? He goes. It was uh, I think it was about quarter past. We did the web. We started the webinar at uh, seven o'clock. No, so we started the webinar at seven o'clock. We got on the call about quarter past seven. I think it was about eight o'clock. He kept saying, he kept saying, you know what? I'm so tired of this. I'm, you know, I'm so glad that someone's going to be able to try and help me. And we found a problem. We didn't negotiate with him on the phone. We never will need to do that. But what we need to do is agree a purchase price for their property. You need to agree a time period to buy their property, and this gives you a time to sell the deal onto another investor without buying the house or without risking it being sold to someone else. So there is some steps to be done in the middle. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, there is some work to be done. We've got to get exclusivity to the deal to make sure that it's not being sold to someone else. And then you're going to sell the deal quickly um, if you're going to sell the deal, a deal quickly, on, then it needs to be below market value, or there needs to be some clear identification as to how or why the deal is so good. Does that make sense? If it's worth £100,000 and you just negotiated £100,000, where's the value? I get so many deals every day. Everyone's, uh, you know, I get lots of people, estate agents, letting agents, et cetera, et cetera, sending me deals. And I'm thinking, yeah, no, okay, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. I just can't see the value. I can't see the real, you know, just because it's uh, £100,000 on the open market, can I do something with it? Um, I have to really find the value. And this is where I sit here, not only as a deal trader, but also as a property investor. So taking my deal trading hat off, putting my property investor hat on, sit back and just assess the situation just for a minute and say, well, okay, if I'm a property investor, would this be a good deal for me? What's the angle? Where's the added value? Why would I buy this? And generally speaking, you'll see, now for those, for those that are on the webinar now, how many of you guys actually see deals that we put out every day? You know, uh, do you see, you know, admittedly, I'm a bit of a pain on email. You know, you'll see an email of me every day. And I, I don't, you know, with all due respect, I don't, I don't apologize for that because I, I believe I'm giving you guys some fantastic value. I'm putting deals in front of you that you would never, ever see before. And I'm putting deals out there that you would probably never be able to negotiate yourself. So I, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. And Jake says it's great stuff. So, um... Okay, Colin says it's inspiring stuff, and that's Colin in Scotland. Thank you very much. So the, I put deals, so just so that you know, I walk, uh, I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk, and the reason why I can walk the walk is because I'm telling you that every day, you see deals off me every day. These are deals that we've negotiated, uh, whether it be from, uh, whether it be a rent to rent, whether it be a lease option, but we'll go through the five deals. So why would someone sell me their house cheap? Reason, because the reason for moving is greater than the actual price. Let's just use an example. Now, for argument's sake, has anyone ever gone through a tough period in their relationship? And let's try and relate to this. For example, if you're a couple and you're getting divorced, 
And the only thing tying you to each other is the property, uh, which may be part of the settlement. Their desire to move on with their lives may be greater than the price that they can sell their house for. And we do a lot of deals with people, you know, with uh, divorce situations. And, you know, I'd like to say it's great. It is a bit of a grim, grim situation, but it is what it is. You know, it's part of life, unfortunately. Not everyone's going to always get on 100% of the time. All we can do is try and make it as swift and as smooth as possible. There is a price that they will need to pay for the stuff like the mortgage, the solicitor, uh, and everything else, which is a bonus. Um, if they can sell their house for what they need quickly, then they'll be happy. You know, generally speaking, sometimes people are just happy to sell for what they owe on it, just so that we can get out of the situation. I don't want to see him again. I want to move on with my life. I found myself a new partner. Whatever it may be, yeah, I hear these every day. Okay, so John writes for Arsh. Uh, how does a novice like me get an audience to sell the deal to? I'll be talking about that shortly. Good question, though. So the next thing is that we need to sell the deal. Now, there are three ways that you can say that sell the deal uh, onto other investors. And, you know, straight away, there's a, there's a free angle. The first angle being free is that everyone pretty much is on Facebook. You know, when you go to Facebook, um, we'll go through... Uh, uh, the first one is Facebook, you know, everyone's part of a property group somewhere where they've got a thread where they can list it onto. Problem that you've got is that you don't know whether how good or how uh, accurate that that database is on there because a lot of people, maybe people like you, are looking to trade other deals. So they may not have the money to do so, to buy or take advantage of the deal. Now, uh, they might... Um, I'm not, I'm not talking about Facebook groups, but generally speaking, whenever I've tried to put something on Facebook, I find that it takes too long to sell. I get lots of tire kickers, I get lots of people who are trying to jump on my bandwagon, uh, and it makes it really interesting. Well, it makes it just a little bit too much like hard work. Now, the other one is that you could sell it to your investor database. I'm hoping that as uh, budding uh, deal traders, you're gonna have your own investor database. Or finally, you could sell it to someone else's investor database, and this is where it becomes interesting because there may be an opportunity uh, for you to JV with someone and sell it to a database and then potentially split the fee. Now, sorry, just someone's just said that they can't hear. Is that the same for everyone else? Or if you can't, can everyone still hear me nice and loudly and clearly? Please, if you can say yes or no. Okay, so everyone's saying that they can still hear me. So, yes, we keep moving on. So let's reduce three steps to one. So what if there's a way to reduce three steps to one? Do you think you could succeed faster? There would be less to learn, so you could take more action immediately. So let's just say that we reduce three steps to one where you only source deals online. You don't need to negotiate with the owners because the estate agent does that for you. Now that's strange because you think, well, why have I mentioned estate agents here? We're gonna be talking about estate agents. You don't need to view the house because the estate agent has already photographed it. There's that word again, estate agents. Why have we mentioned it? And then you don't need to build an investor database to sell your deals because you can JV with me. Now that's interesting, isn't it? So automatically, I've, ju I've just mentioned three words there. Estate agent, estate agent, me. And we'll be talking about this. Because finding deals from the comfort of your own home is exactly what my good friend Raheel. Was anyone on a webinar last week with me when we spoke live with Raheel? Okay, so people said that, yeah, um, a couple of you were on. Um, okay, so Jake says he missed it. Okay, so a good friend of mine, Rahil, he's, uh, he's traded 15 deals in three months and made £15,000 whilst living in Saudi Arabia. Now, let's just put something straight. He does not live in the UK. He worked out in Saudi Arabia. He wanted to know how he could get involved in property. And he's been deal trading for the last three months and he's doing 15 deals. He did it without viewing a single property. He did it without speaking to a single vendor. And all his deals were found online and listed with an estate agent. There's that word again, estate agent. Because he found the deals from the comfort of his sofa in Saudi Arabia on a different time zone 
and English not being his first language. How crazy is that? He started looking, at, he started searching right movies, started searching Zooplay, started searching some of the other property portals, Gumtree, and he found deal after deal after deal after deal. And they're all sat there right in front of us. Because when you work with estate agents, they can become your best friends and your best business partners. They become your unpaid sales force. The reason why I say that, because you don't employ them. The vendor employs them. 90 to 95% of all house sales are done through estate agents. And the reason why we call them the unpaid sales force, they will photograph the property for you. They will draw up the floor plan for you. They will negotiate with the vendor for you. So have I lost anyone so far? Uh, so Darshan said, is there a recording of that webinar? I may actually release that because it was a really, really good webinar. But in order to find deals through the estate agent, we need to figure out what is their pain and motivation because then we've got another, another person to, uh, to talk through. And how can the estate agent help achieve their goals? You've got to remember, uh, you've got to remember, estate agents, they want to sell as many houses as possible. You've got to remember, they want to sell houses as quickly as possible. You've also got to remember that they want to sell them as easily as possible. And you've also got to remember that they want to make their commission. Because remember, if it does not sell, most agents don't make anything. They won't make anything when they don't sell their property. When they've tried to sell a type of property, they will struggle to sell it to a first-time buyer. Does that kind of make sense? Because let's face it, first-time buyer, what do they want to move into? They want to move into their dream home. Their dream home is going to be perfect where they don't have to do anything to it. But then if there's a tired property, are they going to be able to do that? Are they going to be able to afford the deposit? Are they going to have to be able to afford the refer plus all the stress and all the issues that go along with it? When you're tired property, uh, when the agent has a tired property, you are moving a problem away, uh, you're moving a problem for them. The reason why I say that is because not everyone wants to buy a tired property. Yes, property investors like us, we love them. But also, naturally, we're a greedy bunch of people. We want it for next to nothing. So we have to come up with a win-win scenario where we can find someone to buy it quickly and promise and uh, deliver on what we promise. And then also, when you do what you say you will do, which means that we'll buy the property, you will build a relationship with them. The more houses you buy from them, or the more houses you source from them, the more they will call you with an opportunity before they advertise them. And we see this day in, day out. Now, we did a deal with an auction house last week. And he says, oh, okay. he goes, I'll oh, give you a run with one property. He goes, let's see how you get on. He goes, how long are you going to need exclusivity for? I said, how about, I said, how about 48 hours? He goes, no chance. He goes, you think you're going to sell that in 48 hours? He goes, I've been trying to sell it for three months. Uh, I said to him, um, I'll sell it in 48 hours. And he didn't believe me. And I sold it within 24 hours. I went back to him and I said, okay, here we go. I've got someone that wants to buy it. They've already paid my reservation fee. Now, all I do is I then pass the buyer's details onto the estate agent. What do you owe onto the auction? What do you reckon the auctioneer said to me? Fantastic. He goes, okay, what else have I got that I can give to you to shift? Think about it. For three months, he's been trying to flog that property, but he didn't have the vision. He doesn't have the knowledge that I have. He just sees bricks and mortar. I see value. And that's the difference. I see, I see a property far for, uh, I can create, I can turn it to become a cash flow machine and a lot more, I could become a lot more creative with the property. Auctioners and estate agents don't see that. All they see is bricks and mortars, yes, four bedroom into a four bedroom house. I look way beyond that. So here's the five different types of deals that you can trade. First one is BMV below market value. Second one is rent-to-rent -rent deals. 
Third one is lease option. Fourth one, HMO. Fifth one, land opportunities. So there you have it guys, five different kinds of deals. That's just to name a few. You know, we could do assisted sales. We could do commercial to residential. We could do service to accommodation. Do you see where we're going with this? Opportunities are endless. More important, every deal you look at should be an opportunity to monetize. Now, I was naive to that back in the noughties because I only used to look for number one. I only used to look for below market value deals. And if someone said, oh, my house is worth 100,000, but I've got a mortgage of 98, they used to say, sorry, mate, my offer is going to be 70 grand. Uh, and I don't think we're going to be able to do business because you have more on it than what I'm going to be able to offer. And we used to put the phone down. It's only once we started clocking onto this, you know, towards, towards a crash. I'm thinking, what an idiot was I? I turned away probably millions, tens of millions of pounds worth of property that we could have built a, probably one of the largest portfolios in the UK. But when I looked at it back then, we didn't need to because we were trading 30 property deals a month, one a day. So we could have taken on a hell of a lot more just by if we'd opened our eyes to all the different opportunities. Now, the beautiful thing about deal trading is that once, you're, once you've found the deal, you have two choices. You can either keep it for yourself and add it to your portfolio, and there's nothing wrong by that with that, ladies and gentlemen. The beautiful thing is that you decide, am I going to buy it, am I going to keep it, am I going to sell it? Uh, you may not want to keep the deal because it's out of your area. You may not have the money needed to acquire it, or you simply don't want to manage a, property, a portfolio of property. By deal trading, you're helping the vendor and the investor and also yourself. But it gives you an opportunity. Now, for argument's sake, anything that comes up in Wolverhampton, I will buy it. Now, auctioneer offered me a block of flats in Wolverhampton. I'm buying it myself. As a result of uh, also deal sourcing and deal trading, I come across another tired landlord who's got another block of 19 apartments. We're completing on that tomorrow. Having said that though, we get opportunities all over the country and my philosophy is if it's not in Wolverhampton, everything else is for sale. That's my personal philosophy. So yes, I'm still buying and keeping and I'm also trading, but I could only have done that as being a deal trader. So let's go through the five types. So what is BNV? Below market value. We're going to skip through We're going to go through this quite quickly because I'm sure that we've got quite an educated bunch on. And if you, for whatever, whatever reason, if you don't think, if you, think, if you come across a terminology that you're not aware of, uh, like someone said, what is a tired property? Now, uh, Yog, uh, okay, just so you know, a tired property is a property that needs some, uh, let's say some needs some work. So just imagine a house where an old lady has lived in for the last 30 years, and you walk in, it's still got that beautiful salmon pink bath and bathroom set. And it's got that lovely built-in wardrobe with the wooden doors. It's got that lovely flowery pattern wallpaper. And it's got that lovely pink uh, or that turquoise or that light lime green carpet. So these are properties that we would call tired. So, um, and it needs a lot of money to bring up to standard. So below market value, what is below market value? It's where you negotiate a purchase price with the owner that is below the market value. This enables the investor to make money when they buy. Remember what they say about property, you make money when you buy, not, you, not when you sell, because the, the better you buy, the more opportunity you've got of selling it at a good price. Now, the next thing is rent to rent. This is a form where you take the property on, off the landlord, on a management agreement, where you give the landlord a guaranteed rent, for the contract length, maybe typically between three and seven years. I always take seven years where possible and all the income producing contracts can be traded. So for argument's sake, I'm just gonna pick on someone here. Now we've got Elizabeth online. So Elizabeth, thanks for being online. So Elizabeth, Elizabeth maybe the landlady. So Elizabeth uh, has got a lovely property. She may be up in London, the property may be up, let's just say for argument's sake, the, the property may be in Liverpool. Now Elizabeth may not want to travel the whole length and she's worried about agents, she doesn't like agents or she's had a bad experience with agents. 
Now, I can come in and literally offer to take the property on off Elizabeth for a seven year term on a property management agreement where we look after everything internally, externally, and we're going to potentially multi let property. Now, because I'm in Wolverhampton, I may not want to do that myself as well, but I know a lot of property investors that would. So, as a result of creating the contract, as a result of potentially creating, uh, producing the contract, and turning it into a commodity that can be traded. And it's the same with the lease option, because this is similar to rent to rent, but what you're doing, you're actually putting the option to purchase in there. Lease option deals trade very easily, because not only, not only do you get the cash flow, but also the potential option to purchase. As well as that, if you package it correctly, if the cash, flows, if the cash flow is high enough, the cash flow should be able to substantiate the deposit to purchase, creating a no money down deal. Now HMOs, I'm assuming everyone understands what HMO is, uh, it's an acronym for House and Multiple of Occupation. Uh, it can be bought and traded in the same way, same way as a low market value deal. The only difference is that the property has already been converted to HMO, so the cash flow for the investor is much higher. And then finally, land. Best sold with planning to build house or flat. And you know, we've we put out a number of land deals. We do a number of deals with vendors. Like I've had a I've had a land deal come in over the weekend off a property investor where they've bought it through auction, they've gone through planning, and they now don't want to dispose of. And the reason why I mention all this is because there is a world of opportunity. When you have five types of deals, you will never be short of opportunities. Below market value is the most obvious type of deal to trade and not the only type of deal. If you find a HMO deal but you don't have the money to buy it yourself, why waste the opportunity? You can now help the vendor and an investor and also yourself. Don't bat anything away. Monetize every deal. So who can do this? Now I traded 150 deals already this year. Now if you've been watching me along my journey, um, I had a setback in 2015, my father passed away, uh, and that kind of knocked me for six. But I still traded 140 deals, considering that I only, uh, I, uh, I only worked for, uh, was it a few months of that year? Now in 2000, uh, in 2000, as we spoke, then, as my phone pinged, it was uh, one of the guys that said that they've got a deal. So it's interesting. The deals are coming through all the time. So in 2016, I traded, here we go, guys, 250 deals. This year, we're on target to do circa 300 deals. We don't have time to go through all of them tonight, but what I can do is show you the five deals that we've sold in the past week. And to show you that the deals are real, these are deals that you would have seen in your inbox this week. Okay. Uh, okay, so just quickly. So 12th of May, Nymed HMO. Did anyone see that? Uh, Nymed HMO, where we generate this five grand sourcing fee. We'll go through these. 15th of May, two lease options, four grand sourcing fee. 16th of May, uh, four flats. Uh, 18th of May, three bed semi. Now, here's the first one, uh, nine bed HMO. Buxton, uh, recently renovated nine bed HMO. Uh, did anyone see these deals, by the way? Yeah, so Colin said he definitely got it. Uh, produ already producing 40,000 pounds, market value was 320. We negotiated uh, 250, which was a 25% below market value deal. Tony said I would have loved it, just didn't have the money to do the deal. We generated a five grand sourcing fee off that. This one was sourced uh, through Simon Paul, who is now a full time property investor after joining the EPT, which is the Elite Property Tribe in January 2017. His main focus now is deal trading and rent to rent to give Simon a luxury lifestyle. Now, here's a, now you would have seen, unfortunately, my mugshot. Um, gets me in all kinds of places, in all kinds of different trouble, but it's trouble. The reason why I said that, I went to the Property Investors Ball on Friday, and all of a sudden just, 
I just seem to go, hi, Arsh, hi, Arsh, hi, Arsh. I'm thinking, okay, who are these people? I say, oh, yeah, we get your emails. And so they instantly know who I am. So it's good. It's great because it gets me out in a bag and it puts me in the public eye. But here's a smiley face that you'll see pretty much every day whilst you're opening your email. Sometimes you may get sick of it and I make no apologies for that because all I'm doing is I'm putting the deals in front of you for you to make the decision. So this was sold within a day. It gave the potential buyer everything that they needed to know to make that decision. Location, pictures, cash flow, money needed, and the return on investment. Now here's the two lease option deals that we sold up towards County Durham in Bolden and Ferry Hill. And again, sold those for four grand. Overall vision was to generate immediate cash flow with very little uh, capital up front. Use the cash flow to build the deposit for the purchase so you, don't have, uh, so you have a no money down deal. And it's going to generate £43,000 worth of cash flow over a 10 year period which pays for the deposit, the refurb, and also the purchase. And this was sourced by Farah Siddiqui. She lives in London and she sources these through estate agents so she didn't have to view them. And she's also a life coach building a property business in her spare time. It was sold in a day and it gave everyone everything, the vision. Uh, again, the location, the pictures, the cash flow, the vision, and the money. Now, going on to uh, Blackpool, now everyone saw this because believe it or not. Um, so Paul Bell says that was close to me. So Paul, when we say that, was that the one in County Durham? Um, because if, if it is, I might have something else that may be, okay, so it says Buxton, right, okay. Um, I might have something else coming along similar. So again, four flats in County, uh, uh, Blackpool, four, four self-contained flats already producing an income. We managed to negotiate. Uh, we managed to negotiate a discount on it, even though it's already producing income. Now, this was again. This is the famous Rahil. So Rahil again. Uh, was property, well, not a property investor a few months ago. He was a mechanical engineer living in Saudi Arabia. So property is not even his first time. Uh, it's not even what I would say something that he's comfortable with. He found the deal through an estate agent whilst he was living abroad. Now, can you imagine this? Put yourselves in Rahil's situation. English may not be his first language. Look, think of all the barriers that he's got put forward in front of him. First, he's got to learn new strategies. Then he's got to figure out, he's got to muster up the confidence to speak to the estate agent. Uh, and so Abdul says, was that the one sourced by Rahil? Yes, so the property that we just looked at there was sourced by Rahil. So he spoke to an estate agent, admittedly, like I said, his English uh, isn't the greatest, but it's done enough to get the estate agent on board to offer us the property. They sent us the, the game and the exclusivity to the deal, and we got the deal done. Again, this was sold very quickly and very early on. And think of all the other barriers that he had to come across. Now, again, thinking about the fact that he had to think on his feet and you guys can do this because you're in a much better situation because if you're already in the UK, you're in a far greater position. And believe it or not, Rahil's not the only person that I trained abroad. And that's a beautiful thing because I've also got a guy called Russell who's based in Marbella. I've got someone else that's based out in Spain. I spoke to a lady this week that's actually based in Kenya and she wants to do this just off the basis of hearing Rahil's success story. Again, we gave everything that the investor needed to know, the potential buyer. And the reason why I say this, and the reason why we put deals out on my email is that how else would, let's say, uh, I'm just trying to think who bought this now. I think it was a guy in Kent that bought this. How else would the investor in Kent buy a deal in Blackpool or even come to the knowledge of hearing about a deal in Blackpool? Now, in Kent, what else can he buy for 75 grand? Probably a car parking space. Whereas here, I'm actually offering them the opportunity to buy a property that's already producing a decent income. And this is why uh, investors are flocking from the north to the south to get more property for their money. 
to start creating cash flow so that they can live life on their own terms. Now, here's the one that was sourced by Russell Bokes. Now, this is three beds. Uh, did anyone see this deal? Plough Road in Sunderland. Uh, okay, so Kieran's asked the question. Go, did Rahil have to pay the estate agent a commission? Now, here's a beautiful thing, Kieran. No, he did not. Reason? Because the estate agent is making the commission of the seller as they would normally. We make our commission of the buyer. Why do you think the estate agents love selling to us? Because it's not costing them anything. It's not costing them anything. And we're finding them the buyer. We're doing the work for them. And they're literally just sitting in their office looking for more stock to feed us. We're selling the properties for them. We're making our money off the buyer. They make the money off the seller as they would normally. The seller's happy they've sold their property. That's another sold board gone up in the area. The more sell or sold boards that can go up in the area, the more instructions that they get. The hotter the agent becomes in that location. Do you reckon the agent's going to love us for selling all their properties? Do you reckon the agent's going to love us for... Um, the, do you reckon the agent's going to uh, love us for selling all their property? Do you reckon the agent's going to love us for letting all their property? Of course they are. The more they sell, the, the higher the targets, the higher the commissions. The more turnover they do. Now, here's Russell. Russell is Russell Bokes that uh, lives uh, in Marbella. He loves the Spanish sunshine. And he loves the fact that he can build a UK property business from the beach. Now, it, admittedly, it's slightly demoralising speaking to Russell when I say, Russ, what's the weather like in Marbella today? Uh, in a, uh, originally, he was from right up north, and he's got a real northern accent. He goes, Arsh is beautiful, mate. And that's probably a really bad um, northern accent. But he goes, oh, yeah, we've just been out to the beach. We've just had some cocktails. And I spoke to him the other day where we had probably one of the largest downpours that I can remember in such a long time. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of envy there, but he managed to negotiate 25% below market value. And the vision was that we could refinance the property to get your entire investment back and an infinite return on investment. How powerful is that? So if we put the vision correctly and investors can actually see what we're putting out is correct, there's no reason why any deal won't sell. Sold in less than a deal uh, in a day. And he gave the potential buyer everything that they needed to know. More importantly, the most of it was proof of the market value. When we tell people it's worth 115 grand, it means it's actually worth 115. It doesn't mean that it's worth 100, 105 after you've bought it. We show people the vision and we show them evidence as to everything to substantiate everything that we said. So, there you go, guys. You've seen five deals that we've sold in a week, making 17 grand in sourcing fees. You've seen three different types of deals that were sold in a week, and four were sourced from the comfort of their sofa. There's so many different ways that you could do. So Jake has said, so how do you set up the mortgage finance for the investor? Now we've got, you know, uh, admittedly, I'm going to mention these three words again. The Elite Property Tribe has actually a group of solicitors that has a group of um, mortgage brokers, that has a group of accountants, has everything, all the power team. I've built up a massive power team so that uh, literally people, it's almost like a one-stop shop. Now, when you source five types of deals, you are never short of opportunity. When you source deals through estate agents, you won't need to view the property. When you sell deals to my investor database, they sell within a day. Now, going back to everything that we spoke about in the webinar, remember crushing it down from three to one. They decided to sell it to my investor database. They didn't want to go out and put it on Facebook. They didn't want to go out and build their own database. That will take too long. The longer it takes to sell the deal, the less confidence that you give that agent. Does that kind of make sense? So... The question I've got to ask you is, is Simon, Farah, Raheel and Russell any different to you? No, they are not. They have the same determination to change their life as you. The only difference is that they got properly educated. 
they got themselves a mentor and they surrounded themselves with a supportive community. So I'm going to mention this, but then we're going to go on to keep talking about some of the other ways that we can find deals. So what is the Elite Property Tribe? So it, it is basically something that I set up in 2016 where we talk about, and the three key things is training, mentorship, and community. That's the three key points. Now, when we talk about training, I don't just ask you to come on a one-day mentor, a one-day course, and I'm going to teach you everything that you can, uh, you everything that you can learn in one day, so that you can come and take it and absorb it and forget about it on Tuesday. That's not how I operate. Give me 52 weeks with you of online live training, I will show you six cash flow strategies. Talking about deal trading, rent to rent lease options, HMO service accommodation and commercial to residential. You'll be given everything that you need to succeed. So not only do I tell you exactly what to do, I even give you all the tools for you to do it. So the contracts, the checklists, the profit calculators and the sourcing templates. And I also give you the opportunity to JV with me so that you can monetize every deal you source quickly and easily selling it to my 75,000 property investor database. 95% of the deals sold in less than an hour. How many of you guys have actually called me after seeing a deal and said, oh, Ashok, okay, I'm really interested. And I've said, I have to say to you, sorry guys, sorry, but that one's been reserved. What I can do is take your email address and put it on the cancellation list. Should anything happen, I will come back to you. Have any of you had to experience that? Uh, unfortunately, I, I feel for the people that I have to say that to, just purely because there is a lot of people that we say that to. Now, going moving forward, is the accountability and the mentorship. So every week for the next year, I will set you tasks. Every week for the next year, I will become your worst nightmare. I will be asking you, have you done those tasks and why have you not done those tasks or how have you got on with those tasks? Every day you will see me in a WhatsApp group to ask or help to make you succeed faster. I'm always on the end of the phone. You will have my personal mobile number and anytime you run into a roadblock, pick up the phone to me. And now admittedly, uh, I've had some people in the Elite Property Tribe that have had some personal issues and they said, oh, okay, I need to discuss with you. I've got no problem with that. I only teach strategies that I've done myself. I, I've suffered through the costly mistakes so that you don't have to. And then finally, there's a community. Because property can be a lonely business, especially if you're working by yourself. Because not, not when you're part of a supportive community, it doesn't have to be like that. The group of ambitious investors will fill you with inspiration and motivation to transform your life through property. Because there are no new problems. There are only the ones that you haven't seen yet. Use the knowledge and experience of the group to save yourself costly mistakes. Because we've got a buzzing WhatsApp group and a quarterly meetings. And if you were to do all the workshops to try and discover all the strategies alone, you would be spending the best part of £22,000 in, uh, in uh, £22,000 worth of courses, which is a phenomenal amount of money. But joining the EPT, you could do that for, for less than six grand. And Rahil managed to make his money back in less than a month just by joining the EPT. Now, moving on. Next thing is belief. Do you believe that ordinary people can find and trade deals? Do you believe that you can find and trade deals? Now, let's just ask that question. I want you to ask that question of yourself. Do you believe that you can do this? Do you believe that when you look for multiple types of deals across the country that you can find and trade two or three deals a month? Or do you still think that this is out of your reach? Be, be completely frank here. You know, this is your opportunity to ask some questions. You know, I've put time aside so Colin says, I love wheeling a dealer. And guess what, Colin? So do I. Now, I've grown up on watching Only Falls and Horses. I'm a real-life Dell boy. I love the thought. If I can find a way of you know, monetizing everything. Now, for argument's sake, should I tell you how crazy I am? Now, in my house, I run a, 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 a surround sound, I'm sorry, not a surround sound, a musical streaming system called Sonos. Does everyone know what Sonos is or have heard of it? Now I need to. Uh, I need one more box to complete the house. And the box, if I if I was to go to 
uh, a high street retailer, it will cost me £500, which is crazy money. Um, and I went on eBay today, and someone was selling four of them for £900. And I said to myself, well, I don't need four. I need one, but I don't want to spend £500 for the shop. So I went to the guy, and I said, would you accept four fifty for two? And he goes, yeah, I would sell two for four fifty. Now, think about this logically. I could go to shop and buy one for £500, or could buy one that's slightly used, he's had it for three months, I could buy two of them for four fifty. What would you do? Now, I'm, this is a test, actually. I've never done this live on a webinar. And it might be sound a bit crazy. So you could say that we've deal traded today. So what would you do in that scenario? Would you buy the two? So Colin has got it spot on. Buy both, use one, put the other one back on eBay as an individual unit. So do you see how my mind works? I'm always looking for a deal, and you can. The more, you, the better you become at this, the more deals. The better your negotiation skill, the better, uh, the better it will become. And think about it. The way that I thought about this logically was that guy that's trying to sell four on eBay. How often is it that someone's going to want four off him all in one hit? Yes, he was selling them cheap, but. If I can limit it now so that he only has to sell two, he's got more of a chance of selling two to someone as, as, as opposed to four in one hit. So you've got to look at it in all different ways. Now, I'm going to send you on a journey of uh, steady success now. I'm going to uh, introduce you to a few people. Now, Nick Swale he's a, he's a great character. He works for a shop fitting company. Now, Nick wanted to build a pension so that he could... Uh, so that he could uh, gain control. He got into property in 2004 and in 12 years Nick has built up a steady uh, buy select portfolio of 17 houses which is good going. Now last year Nick decided that he wanted to fast track his property journey and made property, uh, uh, make property cash flow pay for more luxuries in his life. So in June 2016 uh, Nick joined the EPT. Now, Nick sourced two deals in two months and made six grand in fees. The, house, the first house was a two-bed terrace house in Hartlepool with a market value of 45 grand, and he negotiated it down to 27 grand. That's a whopping 40% discount. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a young person called Nick, who is... Hi, Nick, are you online? Hello, Nick. I'm hoping that he kicks in any second and goes, hello. Nick, can you hear me? Uh, I think we may have lost Nick. Let's see if he's on. Um, let's see. Let's see where Nick is. Okay, so we'll keep moving on. Uh, if Nick comes online, believe it or not, I could get people from Saudi Arabia online on time. And the one person that's in the UK... I can't seem to get online. How crazy is that? So don't worry, we'll come back to Nick. So, okay. Uh, okay, so Nick's going to be on in a second, hopefully. So, Nick, when you're online, say a quick hello. That would be fantastic. So, moving moving on. So, going back to Rahil. So, Rahil is not even in the UK. He works in Saudi Arabia as a procurement mechanical engineer on a short-term contract. He works a brutal 12 hours a day, six days a week due to tight deadlines. Now, working 72 hours a week, it's safe to say that he doesn't have a lot of time. Not a lot of free time, anyway. So when I discovered all of this, I was more than a little surprised when Rahil asked me to teach him how to invest in property in the UK. So he learned the secrets of deal trading in 2017. And in three months, he's managed to do 15 deals and earn in excess of 15 grand in fees. That's an average. Uh, income of five grand, more than more than Rahil makes working 72 hours a week as an engineer. Now, the Elite Property Tribe teaches you much more than the secrets to find and trade deals. You'll learn six different property cash flow strategies, and he's used that knowledge to set up another property business from Saudi Arabia. 
Nick, if you're online, just say that you're there and we'll get you on. And the beautiful thing about sourcing is that you're able to keep the best deals for yourself. And that's exactly what he's done because he's actually found two rent to rent deals in London. And they're managed for him by another member of the EPT. And it gives him a massive cash flow of £800 a month. And these are his words. Uh, so, Nick, are you online? Nicholas? I'm sure that's what his, probably, his mom and dad probably called him. Okay, so uh, Arsh gave me all the support and advice that I needed um, before trying something new. Through speaking with Arsh, uh, asking lots of detailed questions, I found that the confidence to get out of my comfort zone and build a property business. I'm just trying to figure out, right, so Nicholas, so I'm hoping, Nick, are you with us? Speak now, forever hold your peace. No, we can't seem to get hold of Nick. So all the deals are sold through Arsh's database and sold in less than a day. And this makes deal trading a very simple process because all I have to do is find the deal and Arsh takes care of the rest. So I pretty much make sure that it goes through completion. Just after three months trading, I'm making more money than property uh, than I am in my full-time job. And remember, this is all he started earlier this year. Hello, Nick. Hello. How's the devil are you? Nick, can I just clear one thing up with you? Just I, can get, I can seem to get someone from the other side of the world online on time. Ah. And I, but I can't seem to get you in the UK. To can you hear up. me now? I bloody can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I, I, I've been hearing you all the time. I just can't get this microphone to work. Right, okay. Well done. I, I was about to send the pigeon over to, <laughs> to come and make you up. <laughs> How the devil are you? I'm very good, thanks. Yeah, not so bad. Okay, so Nick, getting straight into it, who is Nick Swells? Um, you know, what's, what's been your journey so far? Um, well, first got interested in property uh, back in my 20s. I uh, bought my first property in 87, would you believe, for 19,000. Uh, six months later, saw it for 33, and then we had the first crash of 89 that, that I'm aware of. Um, so then I just um, I ended up buying a, a property with a girlfriend, and, and that was basically my property journey till the early 2000s. Uh, and then I was working for a shop fitting company with a, a boss that was really into property and he was buying, it was just as, as the property market was rising fast, he was buying lots and lots of properties and he kept saying to me, you need to be buying property. Try, he said, try and buy one property every year for your pension. So um, I owned an ad for a couple of years and eventually I, I got in there in about 2004, uh, bought my first deal then um, and then I gradually, Year by year, I just kept refinancing and buying because at, at that time, all I knew was just buy below market value, refurbish and f refinance. And I kept doing that. Uh, and then we had another recession and I saw that as an opportunity to buy like mad. So I ended up buying about 12 properties in three years. But the problem is I eventually run out of money. So I spent the next five years just trying to pay off all the loans and credit cards I'd, I'd, I'd racked up. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, it was, it was providing me a good income, but it was very slow and you needed lots and lots of money to do this, to keep buying and property. And uh, as, as property prices rose, you need bigger and bigger deposits. So I started to research about... Um, this deal trading I kept hearing about, I kept hearing about lease options and people trading deals. Did my research, because so that's, that's what I'm pretty good at is the research side, and, and came across yourself. And I think it was this time last year I actually came to Hull. You did um, a PIM meeting in Hull, I believe, exactly, exactly a year ago. And you talked about deal trading, and I thought, well, this is it. This this will suit me because I have a busy job and I don't have time really to take on any more property, manage tenants. And I thought this is this is the answer. This to to find deals and trade them on. Um, and and then that's that's how I came to join your elite property tribe. 
have you, have you found it good so far then? I think it's, it's really good, lots and lots of information, uh, very good value for money actually, very good, because I, I looked at lots and lots of different uh, companies and guys, and yours was very reasonably priced, and it lasted a full year, so I got every week, was getting information for a, a full year, uh, incredible, really good information, and to be honest, it was probably too much at first. Uh, and that kind of put me back for six months. There was, there was that many different strategies and that much information. Uh, and with me being a bit more of a researcher, I was just looking at it all, researching, thinking, which, which way shall I go forward? Um, and eventually, I thought, well, I've got to do something. So it was only really at the beginning of this year I started to take action. And as soon as I started to take action, the deal started coming along. So. Um, and, and obviously I found these deals, pass them over to you, um, and, and this, is, this is where you come in, Ash. Is w one of the things that sold me about yourself was, I'm a good researcher, I can find the deals, but I've got nobody to sell them to. I've no idea how to sell them. Uh, and, and that's what sold me to yourself was, you had this massive database and, and we're able to sell these deals very quickly. And, Funny enough, when I got my first deal, you looked at it, you, you, I followed all the steps you told me to do, I um, negotiated a good deal, I did all the sales comparables, the rent comparables, uh, I got him to sign a lockout agreement, um, I produced the advert how you want it to, to be, to, to, uh, to make it sell quickly online, passed it over to you, you, you scanned over, it said, yep, yeah, it's a deal, and I could not believe that in 10 minutes you, you text me back so it was sold. Incredible. I always, I, I, I always I, just send back a text. Uh, and it's very, I don't get emotional about property, so I literally send it back to text it. Uh, I think it's capital letters and just put sold. And then yeah. I think we'll be back jumping for joy. Uh, I, could believe it. I could not believe in 10 minutes you'd sold it. It was incredible. So, yeah, and, so, uh, and then we, we just moved on to the next, and then uh, Nick. It's very good, and once once you've got the confidence in one deal, it, would you say it's like a, pretty much like right learning to ride a bike? Once you do the first one, and you become comfortable with what you're offering, the rest kind of just falls into place. Yeah, it was it was great. I just couldn't believe it. it can make three thousand quid just like that. Um, and I've got I've got lots of buy to let properties, um, but it, it takes me a full year to make two or three thousand pound. Whereas with deal trading, you can make two or three grand in, in a few weeks, it's, it's, it's incredible, so, and plus you, you can do it from anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world actually, and, and, you, do, and you don't have to just stick to your own local place, you can deal trade all over the country. Okay, I'll tell you what, actually, uh, you know, uh, this was quite an interesting day, so anyone that comes on the EBT that allowed to shadow me for the day, um, and so Nick says, yeah, I want to come down. Was it on a Friday that you came down, Nick? It That's was. right, yeah. Friday. Yeah. yeah, you had a date with your wife that night, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, so Nick uh, said, I'm going to come down on Friday. And then Nick said, Nick's quite, I don't know, very, uh, very placid gentleman as well. Very, very, very calm, very relaxed. And I'm very quick off the mark. I go, come on, come on, come on, come on. I kept saying to Nick, uh, come on, let's get moving, let's get moving, let's get moving. And then Nick, how would you, how would you describe the day? It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I just could not believe the speed you work at uh, and the speed you drive as well. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Okay. 100 mile an hour all the time. It's incredible. But, 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 but really... The, the way you work is just incredible. That day. Sorry? You have to change your trousers twice that day. I, 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 <laughs> I did. I said I've got to go now to change my underpants. Oh. <laughs> but uh, it's, I just could not believe how fast you work. It's, you, you're, a, you're a walking deal machine. It's incredible. It's yeah. absolutely incredible. You, you, you remind me of, of the boss who got me into property. He was just the same. He was just... Quick, 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 fast, quick decisions, straight in there. Uh, and, and he knew back in the early, early late 90s, he was buying up lots and lots of properties as fast as he could because he knew the market was rising fast. 
So okay. yeah, no, it was it was a it was a fantastic day. I really enjoyed it. I learned loads. Brilliant. Okay. Um, is there any questions that anyone wants to ask Nick whilst we got him online? I'm just conscious of the fact that we are, because um, we are running slightly behind schedule. Um, I'll tell you what, Nick, are you okay to hold on? Whatever you yes. do, don't, don't unmute that bloody microphone, because you won't get back. <laughs> so, okay, so if you stay online, let's see if anyone comes up with any questions and we keep moving on. Now, the good thing with, uh, obviously, Nick came into the office, he came and seen how I operate, and I, I you know, I'm always open to that. Um, I'm... I'm always open to people coming and spend their day with me because I get to learn off them. I get to understand how they operate. They get to see how I operate. And as Deal said, I am, uh, as Nick said, I am almost like a deal walking machine. I, I prefer to think that I can do a deal every day, and you know that's why I'm trying to trying to hit the uh, smash the 300 barrier mark this, uh, this year. So, question that's coming for you, Nick. How did Nick, Nick how did Nick negotiate the discount? Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a case of building up the confidence to, to give these guys a ring. It, it's, you know, you've got, you've got to take action. You've got to talk to these guys, learn the situation, find out what the motivation is, uh, and then just gradually chip away at the price and, and suggest, look, um, I could sell this for you quickly, but um, really the price needs to be a, a little bit more attractive because you know we have a database of 75,000 investors and I can get this sold for you within a day so it's just putting that forward to him but sowing the seed in his mind that this could be sold but it needs to be at the right price and and slowly I chipped him away um, j just by asking him um, what, what would be the least you would take he knocked off 5,000 pounds straight away and I just sort of said you know yeah that's not bad but it just needs to be a little bit more a little bit cheaper, and then I can get the sulfur, and and he, and he dropped it down another couple of grand, uh, and there you go. It was a, it was a, it was then attractive deal that I could sell quickly, uh, and and that's how and that's how I did it really. Okay, fantastic. I'm just trying to think uh, other questions. Uh, I'm, okay, how much research? Um, how do you do the research on the deals, Nick? Wouldn't wouldn't know what is a good or bad deal. Um. It's basically a, a lot of a lot of research and right move and Zoopla, um, and also I use um, Gumtree. That's that's where I mainly get my deals from. Um, I have a, a VA out in the Philippines, and she does all my research for me. Um, she does a lot of she does all the spreadsheets on Gumtree. She goes through all the properties for sale on Gumtree, provides me with a spreadsheet, uh, and then what I do is. I text all the landlords. I'm basically targeting landlords who may be interested in selling, and also uh, people who want to sell the properties. I, I basically send use. I'm use MessageBird, send mass texts out, and, and I find that way is is quicker than email. I get a, a a good response back, and then basically rather than keep emailing, I just ring them up. i have now got the confidence to pick the phone up and talk to them, find out what the situation is. See how much um, they want to sell for, and then I do my due diligence and, and look for other properties on Right Move and Zoopla in the area to find out if it's a good deal or not. And if it's if it's below what the the average price is around there, then I know it's a good deal and and, and take it further. Okay, perfect. Uh, so a couple of people said, well, there's a couple of generic questions that I'll answer towards the end. But okay, thank you very much for being online, uh, Nick. And no doubt I'll speak to you during the week. Okay, cheers. All right, take care. Cheers. So moving on. So uh, other people that have really inspired me and should hopefully inspire you. Uh, there's another gentleman called Girish who's worked as a full-time consultant as a pediatric surgeon in Birmingham. He had a £120,000 salary, working 70 to 80 hours a week, worked for his week, uh, lived for his weekends and holidays. His first big reason why was to build the first children's hospital in Mauritius, a vision which is much bigger than himself. Now he's got an aspirational, he had an aspirational salary, gave him a comfortable lifestyle, but was never going to give him the money to build the hospital. Now cash flow, he needed a cash flow strategy that needs virtually no upfront, property, uh, upfront money. He needs a cash flow strategy that would give him an income to live on, and a cash flow strategy that would give him more time, and a cash flow strategy that would help him scale to achieve his vision. 
Now, within working with me for three months, he quit his job within three months. And was it scary for him? Absolutely. But what made it a safe decision? Knowing that he could build a real property income without owning a property. Because he decided to follow the rent-to-rent -rent strategy. Remember, you don't have to sell every deal that you keep. He decided to deal source and deal trade. Uh, sorry, he decided to deal source rent-to-rent -rent properties and keep them for his own portfolio. Now, what made the difference for him was the opportunity to shadow me. So the quality of the advice, the weekly webinars, the recordings, and the community. So he come and spent a whole week with me. So on day one, he was afraid to pick up the phone. By day five, he had this new confident Giresh that was on, uh, on the verge of getting his first deal. I pushed him through his comfort zone. Give me five days and I'll do the same for you. Now here's another person, Alfred, another aspirational character. 2006, uh, the life that Alfred knew was about to be taken from him by cancer. Fortunately, Alfred survived and there's just one problem. He was advised by his doctor not to continue doing any building work. He needed to earn a way of living that wouldn't damage his health. But having worked in construction for 10 years, he didn't really know anything else what to do. So he got educated, he took action, and started buying terraced houses and renting them as single lets. And he built a decent portfolio of nine properties. But Alfred had become what he had previously envied, a property investor. Uh, there was just one problem. His portfolio was not giving him enough cash flow to give him a living uh, lifestyle. This, then he started looking at all the other strategies, started looking at affiliate marketing, started looking at selling products on Amazon and eBay. But as a result of that, he started running four different businesses, which gave him a decent income, but he was working long hours to achieve it. So he started looking for a cash flow strategy, a strategy which I showed him how to use a simple four-step system to find and trade below market value deals. In four months, Alfred traded five deals and made 20 grand in sourcing fees. That's an average monthly income of five grand. And again, you can read this, the fact that we showed him that it was a very detailed training system. Uh, we showed him how, uh, the, particularly regarding the value of the property and the uplift potential, which minimizes the risk and takes the emotion out of investing. I always say this, the numbers do not lie. This is a perfect way to make sure that uh, your excitement at finding a deal doesn't lead to bad decisions. Again, he used our deal analysis system to make sure uh, what to understand what's a good deal, what's a bad deal, and so we can calculate exactly what it is that would make the perfect HMO. And this then gave Alfred the confidence to speak with agents and homeowners, knowing that he was the ex expert in the room. Now, Sarah finally is a life coach. Now, she's helping parents to create more balance and harmony in their lives. And she's a beautiful soul and a beautiful uh, human being. As a business owner, Sarah wanted, uh, Sarah wanted property to give her a second income to put her kids through school. Now, she needed a cash flow that would pay for two kids to go through private school. She needed something that would give her to do in her spare time. And then finally, she needed a strategy that didn't need a large capital investment. So she joined the EPT in June 2016, and she used the whole of the first year to absorb information about different cash flow strategies. You've got to remember, people work in different ways. Now, everyone's going to go out there and become a deal source machine. They need to absorb and get the information in a methodical manner first so that they can be confident with what they're offering. By the end of the year, she had the confidence that she needed, and four months later, Sarah managed to source her first below market value deal, 53% below market value. She's also set up some service accommodation, a uh, flat in a town near Glasgow. She's managing the flat for the landlord, so it didn't cost her anything to gain control of the asset, and it's now given her a monthly income. She decided to just give it a go, and she agreed a purchase price on a house of 65 grand on a three-bed terraced house which had a market value of 140 grand. And the deal was sold within a day to Arsh's database. And it made the deal trading process so much easier as I always knew there was a guaranteed way to trade the deal for a healthy fee.
Now I've got the proof that the system works in Scotland, I'm going to make deal trading my focus as it's so lucrative. Through the EVT, um, I learned many ways, uh, different uh, cash flow strategies, and I combined two of them, and I found uh, the, uh, the flat in Glasgow near Hamilton, called Hamilton. The landlord was having problems renting his two-bed flat, and I immediately offered him a guaranteed income on a five-year let. This means that we can both benefit on a long-term plan. And it's managed using the service accommodation strategy, uh, which is uh, rents easily to tourists and business travellers. And it's given a, a property cash flow, given a luxury income on part-time hours, just by using some of the systems that we implement. Now, I'm going to ask you the question, are these guys any different to you? Are Rahil, Nick, Giresh, Alfred and Sarah any different to you? No, they're not. They represent property investors across the country with the same passion and skills as you. The only difference is that they put their doubts aside for long enough to give this a try with results with uh, that almost defied a belief. Now remember, Rahil traded 15 deals in three months. Girish spent a week in my office and got his first deal. Sarah spent the whole year learning all six cash flow strategies before I decided which one to do so that she'd become comfortable with it. And then she decided to start trading deals and found a deal within four months. Now, again, what is EPT? It's training, mentorship, and cash uh, community. I always call it cash flow, but it's community. So, 52 weeks of online training, six cash flow strategies, deal trading, rent to rent, lease options, HMO, service accommodation, commercial to residential. You get all the contracts, you get the checklist, you get actually my whole power team, you get to speak to my whole power team, solicitors, accountants mortgage advisors, tax advisors, all the spreadsheets and all the proven templates. And you get to JV with me, which means that you get to monetize every deal to my database, which consists of 75,000 and consistently increasing. And most of the deals, 95% of deals are sold within an hour. And this is how Rahil reduced the three-step process to just one. Now moving on to mentorship, how about some people only succeed once they've got someone to be accountable to. And if I was to say to you every year, every week for the next year, I'm going to set you a task. Every week for the next year, I'm going to ask you if you've completed those tasks. Every day, you're going to see me in a WhatsApp group to help you succeed faster. And more importantly, I'm going to be on the other side of the phone. So every anytime you've got a problem, you pick up the phone to me. Anytime you come to a roadblock, pick up the phone. I only t uh, teach strategies that I do myself so that you don't have to worry about the mistakes that I made previously. Finally, it's community. Now, before I talk about community, I'm going to just quickly introduce you to the EPT uh, WhatsApp WhatsApp group. Um, let's just quickly wait for uh, so the EPT WhatsApp group. So, if you look in here, so so fragment say summits had an issue with trying to remove the electric box. I know that's completely off topic, but here the guys jump in and say, "Well, I've been quoted this. You know, you should be looking at this." So here's some of the other bits of people who are in the group, and here they are. So, so Simon's got a lead for four HMOs in Manchester, going to view them on Monday, and two uh, off the HMO register, and then here's some of the support that they've got off them. So here we go. So uh, Sandy said that she had a bit of an issue uh, with one of her tenants, and again, it's a very supportive community. So moving on. It can be a lonely business, but not when you're in part of a supportive community. There are no new problems. Remember the WhatsApp group, the quarterly meetings, and together, if you were to put it all together, all the value that we offer, you would be spending in excess of 22,000. Now, what we're asking for is, in actual fact, 3,000. So the actual cost of the course is 6,000, but you only pay 3,000 to start with, and then the other 3,000, I'm so confident that you will succeed at this, that the other 3,000 only paid once you've done deals. The balance is payable at the speed of your success. And I'm so confident that you'll do deals within the first month that we're actually offering you a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you, uh, if you join the EPT and you find that it's not for you, within 30 days, all you've got to do is say, Arsh, okay, sorry, it's not for me. And... Um, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. All you, I ask is that you attend the webinars 
that you take action on all the tasks that we set. If you take an action and after 30 days you decide that it's not for you, then we have to do is say, then I'll give you a full refund. Because what we're offering you to do, you can replace your salary by simply following the footsteps, uh, simple four step system, and you'll learn six cash flow strategies, and you'll have a mentor to hold you accountable to goals. You'll have the supportive community to help ambitious property investors to inspire you to greater levels of success. And you can join the EPT at no risk because you are covered by a 30 day money back guarantee. And all you have to do is literally, if you want to join, click on that link. Uh, so what I will do is someone, uh, someone said, can you put the link? I'm going to put this link just into the chat now, which all of you will have. So you go, it's in there, um, and the first webinar starts on Wednesday the 7th of June. And you will get instant access. You will get instant access to all the contracts and all the agreements. You'll get instant access to all my systems. You get instant access to all my proven adverts. You get instant access to my power team and previous recordings. And you use this, re you know, you use this resource of library to build your property business immediately. Now you can pay in one go at £3,000 or you can pay three instalments where there's a slight charge for doing so but remember whatever you pay if you decide that it's not for you in 30 days you get 100% money back guarantee. Now here's another person now Vicky Hughes, uh, inspirational lady, she joined in 2016 and she made her first deal for a five grand fee within the first month. Pretty crazy that she made five grand in one month. In five months, she made 35 grand in sourcing fees. It's amazing to see how much cash flow that she can do. Now, some of you may know Vicky, she's on the property circuit, and she's found property. Uh, it, she found that she, uh, a property strategy that can give her an income to live on. You don't need to reinvest a lot of your profits because sourcing is virtually free. The highest income month to date so far has been over 10 grand. It's only dropped because she's busy converting photography studio to luxury spa and nail bar. Now, deal trading gives her what she's always wanted, a fantastic income and time to be with her family. Here's one property deal that we did together. So Vicky and I did a deal together as in Dudley in the West Midlands, and we generated 35 grand off one deal. She found a derelict building with some unused land. She didn't really know what to do with it, so with my input, we found the owner and we spoke to them. We managed to uh, figure out a use for the building and after getting some drawings made up, we sold the and, uh, land with the architect's drawings in an auction for 115 grand, which is 35 grand more than what we offered the owner. And we made 35 grand sourcing fee from one deal. Now, gotta ask yourself, very, we're coming to the end of the webinar now, gotta ask yourself, when is it going to happen? Is it going to be a day, one day in the future, or is it going to be today? Can you achieve the same lifestyle change and success when you do the following two things? You follow a proven system and you take consistent action. Because you've got to ask yourself, don't you owe it to yourself? Isn't it time that you actually decide, you know what, screw this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it successful myself. I'm going to, all the people that said that I can't do it, I'm going to prove them wrong. Just like I did. My friend said to me, Ash, you know, you're stupid. Just go off and get a job. Go and get a, go and get a job. Make it easy for yourself. Why do you want to work so hard? And why do you want to feel all the rejection? But now, he who laughs first, laughs last. I don't know if that works or I don't know if that's the right, right phrase. But anyway, we'll run with it. Don't you owe it to yourself to learn these cash flow strategies at no risk to you. The reason why I say no risk to you is because if you don't think they're for you within 30 days, you can have your money back. And more importantly, you can have a mentor that's got 17 years worth of experience that's pretty much got us doing all the strategies in the market right now to acquire property. So you've seen how people like Rahil, Giresh, Daryl, Alfred and Sarah and Vicky have been able to make unbelievable results. And again, going back, just talking about, you'll learn six cash flow strategies. So here's my promise to you. You will learn six cash flow strategies during a 52 week program 
and you will have a mentor to hold you accountable to your goals. You'll have a supportive community of other ambitious property investors to inspire you to greater levels of success and you will join and you can join the EBT at no risk to you because you're covered by a 30 day money back guarantee. And the first webinar starts on Wednesday the 7th of June between 8 and 9 p.m. So, as promised, here's a bonus. You will get, uh, for anyone that's on the webinar now, you get the deal sourcing million pound my map. And all you're going to do is someone said, well, straight away someone said, can you copy that and put that into the chat? Yes, I can. So, you can download that for free. There you go. Um, so, I've just put that in the chat, so hopefully you should all see that. Uh, and that gives you all the questions, the, all the ultimate vendor questions, things to say, things not to say, and how you can move forward. So someone's just asked, can we put the link? Now we'll use this opportunity, just a couple of minutes here, just to answer any questions. Are there any questions of stuff that we've gone through this evening? Is there anything that you think, well, we didn't cover, or you know, we should have covered? Happy to happy to go through those now. We've got we've got approximately five five to ten minutes. So Paul Bell says his work, work, his wife works as a VA. Oh man, Paul, you've got so. If your wife works as a VA, you've got pretty much all the answers waiting or sitting there. You know, you can create a fantastic partnership. Um, okay. So. Lorraine says, how much is one source deal worth? Now, um, for Lorraine, it's kind of an open any question, just purely because uh, every deal is different. If you notice on all my adverts, you know, one deal could be worth as little as £250 if there's got no value to it whatsoever. Other deal may be worth £35. Grand. You know, every deal is completely different. Every time we look at it, we never know what it is or what the sourcing fee is going to be. The average for kind of a, just a standard Below market value deal is around three grand. If there's a significant income in it, if it's already income generated, HMO it could be five grand. If there's quite a substantial large deal, it could be you know uh, ten grand. Every, we have to look at every opportunity, uh, every opportunity, and then decide what the fee is. Now, for example, say for a HMO, it could be ten percent of the cash flow. So if it's producing twelve grand a year, it could be that your cash flow is, is circa twelve hundred quid. So Julie has asked, how would you make profit on a rent to rent that you could not use? All right, okay. How would you make profit on a rent to rent that you could not use as service accommodation? Right, okay, Julie. Uh, good question. Question is, uh, where is a property? Is a property in an area where it could be multi let, or is it uh, is it already a flat? Is it, if it's a flat, you're going to be pretty limited to what you can do on a multi let. Um, okay, so sorry, I'm just going through the question. So, Julia, yeah, if you could tell me. Okay, wow, okay. So it's a it's a flat in Bradford. Okay, right. So Julie, so she's got a flat in Bradford that she's potentially looking at on a rent to rent basis. Okay, so if it's not working as a multi let, depending on how many bedrooms it is, you could depending on the level of rent that you've agreed with the landlord, you could still run it as a single let and still make a bit of cash flow off it. Admittedly, it's not going to be great, but um, instead of going back to the landlord and handing it back, I'd rather make something off it as opposed to nothing. Okay, um, so Jenna said, oh, she mentioned different deals to trade. I heard about a sandwich option, but don't know what that is. Sandwich options are difficult, admittedly, because there's lots of people in the centre. If I was honest, uh, it probably takes slightly too long to in, uh, mention now, but Jenna, if you wanted to drop me an email, my email address will be at the, or if you want to give me a call tomorrow, I'd be happy to go through that with you. So someone said, can we see the bonus link again? So there we have it. Uh, okay, so Victor says, can this be done from another country? Of course it can. Now, we've, today we've demonstrated two people who are both in different countries, different sides of the world. One's in Spain, in Marbella, 
the other one's in Saudi Arabia, and they're both doing this. So how do you, okay, uh, so we've kind of covered that question, Ruth, how do you determine what to charge for the deal? Uh, like I said, every deal is different, so a rent-to-rent -rent deal will be a little bit more different to a, um, a below market value deal. You have to have a look. You have to have a look at the cash flow and also the value that you're adding. There's no point charging three grand for a property that you know there's potential a hundred grand worth of profit. You know you're worth more than that. You'd rather you uh, you're worth more than that, and you should be. If you're finding deals to that magnitude, you should be able to get a decent uh, deal sourcing fee for it. If it's a small deal, then yeah, naturally take small deals and just keep turning them over. One thing that you don't want to do is become greedy with the deal or get emotional with the deal. I've seen far too many people get emotional with the deal. I had one guy, believe it or not, in the UPT, he had a rent-to-rent -rent deal and he refused to move off £1,500 as a sourcing fee. And I kept saying to him, the cash flow is not that great. You know, if someone offers you 500 quid, take it, he goes, no, Osh, no, he goes, that's too cheap, I want more than that. And eventually, as a result of holding out for £1,500, he lost the deal. He became emotional with it. So whatever you do, do not get uh, emotional with deals. Now, other questions. Uh, Steve says, how many hours per week do people commit on this? Now, great question, Steve. The more you commit to it, the better your success. Now, if you're thinking that you're going to uh, spend 10, 10 minutes a week on it, and you're going to get 100 deals uh, within the first year, it's highly unlikely. Whereas Raheel, he actually spent two hours a night, so he spent 10 hours a week. Now, 10 hours a week is very excessive, considering that obviously we do a webinar every week. We do a webinar for an hour a week. So you've got to have a look at your time scale. You've got to have a look at what you can actually dedicate to it, and you've got to work it around that. Because there's no point me saying that you've got to do uh, two hours a day, and you're saying, well, Arsh, I can't, I can't commit to that. I've got some people in the EPT that can only commit like three hours a week, but providing that you're using those three hours a week constructively, you know, as um, as Nick said on the webinar, providing if you wanted to, a lot of it could be outsourced. Um, provided a lot of it actually could be outsourced, so in that respect, you know, a lot of it maybe a lot of your time might actually be spent liaising with VAs um, who were potentially getting data for you, who are potentially uh, doing the research for you, who are potentially speaking to landlords and understanding, and then you, your time may just be on evaluating the lead and the generate uh, the lead to make sure that it works. So Vicky said, uh, do you do your due diligence on the property you see advertised, i.e., or first, or do you contact the vendor to see what the lowest figure is first? I don't know because it's a difficult one again, Vicky, just purely because when I see a deal online, uh, I always work off the figure of what's being advertised. If it works off that, then great. If it doesn't work off that, then we move on. I don't want to spend I don't want to spend loads of time contacting a load of vendors and getting into this negotiation process with vendors if we know that the deal doesn't work from day one. Does that kind of make sense? So if it's a four bed HMO, if it's a four bed property and it, we know the income works and then that's great because then that gives us an opportunity to get us in front of the owner and then start to negotiate. Uh, sorry, someone's just asked, can we put the link up again? So there we have it. So, okay, so Victor says, how do you find, how do you find VAs? Um, so how do you find VAs? That's a very good question because uh, there are lots of VAs. You know, there's I'm your PA. There's if you Google in that you're looking for a virtual assistant and you just Google that, it'll come up with hundreds of different options. You know, it's, it's straightforward to do. Okay, so uh, Paul says that her his wife works for people per hour, which is a good one. Now uh, Paul's. Paul's wife may be one that's working in the UK. A lot of VAs actually work out towards Malaysia uh, and the Philippines. So, you know, you've got to make sure the, the key to a VA is making sure that they understand exactly what your goal is. Uh, Elizabeth said, when is the next intake? Uh, might not be able to uh, do May. Now, okay, the next intake is not until January next year. So it means that you could potentially lose a whole year. Now, 
if you can't do this year for whatever reason, if you can't make the payments, one thing that we could possibly do is start to potentially spread the payments between now and January, and you only start the intake from Jan. So I don't know, that might be not. Uh, I'm, I just thought of that, that off the top of my head. So a couple of people said that they may be ready for next year, but not right away. Um, so I'm just having a look if there are any other questions. I think we've kind of answered. Okay, last question then. Anton said, is it easy to negotiate a BNV deal with an estate agent? Yes, is the honest answer. Just purely because you're going to tell, you're going to show them how quickly you can act, how quickly you can move on a deal. The moment they give you a deal, how quickly you act. The quicker, the quicker you act, the quicker you shift the deal from, the more deals that come. The more, the easier they are happier to, uh, the easier the deal flow will become. As a result, you know, as a result of you taking action, selling it, they won't care on uh, negotiating on the deal anymore. The reason why I say that is because if it sits on their books, the way that they look at it as well is how much time are they spending marketing that property? Um, okay, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll go on to Kieran's question in a second. So, okay, so just imagine a, a guy, to, uh, an agent takes on a property. Now they've got to list it on Rightmove, they've got to list it on Zoopla, they've got to put it in the paper, they've got to, and all this costs money. Uh, they've got to take a load of calls. Whereas if they send it to you and say, okay, Arsh, okay. Or they'll they'll say to, sorry, I've, I've just lost your question there. They'll say to you, Anton, okay, I've got this great deal. Okay, we could possibly move on the price on something. If we could do something quickly, what do you reckon we can do? And then you start to appraise it. You think, okay, I can do this, I can do that. Okay, and then you say, Arsh, okay, let's, let's try this. And I'll look at it, I'll appraise it. If I don't agree with your, if I don't agree with your angle, I'll tell you. Or you can even pick up the phone to me and say, oh, she agents, just call me, I've got this deal, what do you reckon? And I'll tell you what I think about it over the phone. I'll either say, yes, I think it's got legs, or no, it hasn't, don't waste any time on it. And it really is as simple as that. Um, okay, so Ryan says, how many deals do we need to pay the three grand back? Technically speaking, I would say two, because if each of the deals are three grand each, and then you've made six grand, and then you've, of that with me, so that's three grand. So technically speaking, you need two deals. So if you said that you can't do two deals in a year, you know, we'd, we've got people that smashing 15 deals in three months. You know, when you look at people like Vicky that did 30 deals in the first year, and these are people that had no experience. Okay, Kieran says, are there any upsells? Kieran, I'd love to say yes, but there aren't any upsells. Once you're in the tribe, you're in the community. All you've got to do is take action. And I can pretty much put that on the 100% guarantee. There's 100% no upsell on it. Um, so I suppose on that note, guys, I'd like to wish you all very much, uh, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to learn how you can deal trade, make a five grand monthly cash flow in your spare time. Hopefully you've seen how easy it is that you can trade deals from the comfort of your own home. It really is as simple as that. Um, if, there are any, if there's anything else, if you've got any questions about the Elite Property Tribe, if you've got any questions about deal trading, deal sourcing, etc. Remember, I only work, uh, one question that came and says, Ash, would you sell deals for people who are not the EPT? Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately not. I only work with, because that's one of the USPs, the unique selling points for being part of the elite property shop that I work with you. Otherwise, it wouldn't be very exclusive. Now, Ryan said, so, so you take 50% in commission. That's correct. So every deal that's sold through to our database, we take a 50-50 split on it. So guys, on that note, uh, I'd like to thank you all very much for your time. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully I've answered a lot of the questions. I appreciate we've been online for quite a long time tonight. Uh, so thank you for staying online, and if there are any questions, again, feel free to come back to me. But on that note, I'd like to wish you the very best of the rest of the evening, and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care, good night, and God bless.